Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. here on uh, Real Agriculture by Brunel Sabrin of Antera Agronomy and uh, we're talking about how to uh, get winter wheat off to a, a good start in western Canada. Brunel, uh, the stubble heights, this winter wheat field planted into uh, into canola, stubble height is, is one of the key factors for, for catching snow to protect the crop. For sure, thanks Kellen for giving me this opportunity. Um, yeah, when it comes to establishing winter wheat, uh, there's this, well, any crops, there's a saying half sown, half grown. So it's really crucial to pay attention to getting the crop off to a good start. And one of those key factors is the stubble height. Not only the stubble height, but the amount of stubble. So anytime, the more uniform you can leave the stubble, stubble the less traffic on the field. You know, try not to harrow, try to leave most of what you can standing. You know, a 12 inch height is better. Sometimes it's, you can't do that. This year we've had a lot of lodging in particular, so guys have had to cut lower. But if we've got shorter stubble, the, the quantity of stubble is can also help offset that so if you've got lots of shorter stubble it can be just as good as fewer stalks of taller stubble. How about from a, a nutrient perspective how do you recommend uh, or what do you recommend putting down with the seed and what do you recommend saving for spring or, or vice versa? Well on the starter fertilizer front it's good to get the winter wheat off to a good start. Um, winter wheat will use 70 percent take up 70 percent of the nitrogen that it needs by the time it's um, done tillering so it's crucial to have that available early on. In the fall, you don't want too much nitrogen available to the plants because that can lead to too much growth, which reduces the winter hardiness. So there's a bit of a balance that you have to keep there. Often what guys will do is they'll apply a starter fertilizer of 20 to 30 to 40 pounds of phosphate, depending on your openers, your row spacing, and your soil texture, as well as moisture availability. Um, more and more what we're seeing is people are using products like a, a polymer coated urea or ESN because of its increased seed safety we can often get that first 30 or 40 pounds that we need to get the crop off to a good start and have some available early in the spring and that buys guys time if the, they want to wait and see what kind of winter kill they get or if the crop makes it through to, to decide if they want to top dress and how much they should top dress come mm -hmm. springtime. And minimizes the risk of not being able to get on the field in time in, in spring. Yeah, um, the old common practice was to put down, around here was to put down roughly 120 pounds of liquid nitrogen top dressed in the spring on the frost. So just to make sure that we're in there early, but then you're relying on uh, freeze thaw to get that nitrogen in the ground if it stays cold and the nitrogen stays on top then that's not an ideal situation so it's better to wait a little bit later once you're we're thawed out so anything that we can do to supply that nitrogen guys with mid row banding side banding are able to put down a hundred percent of their nitrogen in the fall if they choose to mm -hmm. how about uh, in terms of weed control obviously volunteer canola is, is often something that uh, that needs to be addressed yeah, it's something that I don't I think producers don't pay enough attention to. Um, what we've got here on this field is fairly green. Uh, we had a lot of lodging in this area this summer, and with that came a little bit more sclerotinia than we would normally see, so there was a lot of shelling. A lot of guys also had water damage, so they chose to straight harvest the crop, and instead of having smaller windrows of canola under the swath, you know, we've got fields where there's a fairly thick canopy, so this canola is competing for the nitrogen, it's competing for sunlight, so it, the, the wheat doesn't have as good a start as it should. And some of this canola too, if we get a good snow cover early on, it'll overwinter and keep growing in the spring, which, again, we're not going to be able to get on early enough to, to get this canola out of there, so anything we can do to give it a good start in the fall, we should. So, you know, there's a lot of pre-harvest option or pre-seed options, for taking out the canola volunteers, some with some residual, but there's also post-emergence options to get this stuff out of here. Finally then, Brunel, if we're looking to get this crop off to a good start, the fundamentals for, for seeding when it comes to depth and speed and, and seeding rate, all those things are important for, for winter wheat as well. For sure. Um, with winter wheat, they recommend being at a half an inch to an inch deep. 
So seeding speed comes into play when getting the more consistent of a seeding depth you get, the more even your emergence, you know, the more even the rest of your crop is going to be. The, um, one of the things with winter weed is maturity, you know, the timing of heading and the tillers are usually a little bit later, which makes fungicide timing a challenge. So the more even we can seed the crop, the better, more even emergence we're going to get. Uh, you don't want to be too shallow because of the freeze-thaw effect in the spring can start pulling some roots or crowns apart. But you don't want to be too deep either where you're going to have you know a weak difference between emerging different areas of the field so depending on your seeding tool speed is a factor just like any other crop if you're going too fast you're going to have more uneven mature or seeding depth all right well thanks for taking the time to chat for now for sure thank you